Hello everyone, Amod here from Retarget Common YouTube channel. In this video tutorial, we will learn to use Selenium WebDriver to intercept API calls made during functional flows on a web application. Let's see few use cases in which we may need to capture API calls. I have a user registration page and when we pass name, email, password and perform click on register button, it shows a message user created successfully. But internally it calls an API upon clicking on register button which takes provided values as payload and process it. Based on API response, UI may show success or error message. If you see the source code of my application, here I am calling one API of method post, which will take the details provided by you as payload. If you want to check whether this endpoint is called or not, for that we need to inspect this page, go to network tab and let me click on this register button again. Down below you can see I have two entries. Latest one will be on the top. If you mouse over on this post, you can see one URL is displayed. This is actually my endpoint. And the first call is a pre flight type, which has written 204. So, this pre flight call is a preliminary HTTP request, which is made by browser to server before sending actual request. This is happening due to cross origin resource sharing protocol. And when a web application running in one domain or origin tries to make a request to a resource on another domain, this pre-flight type request can be sent. If you click on this request, you can see URL is the same whatever I have in my source code. And this is a options request method, which I written to not for no content. But the actual call will be this request and if you select it you can see the api url it is a post type which is my actual method type and it has written 201 if you go to payload section you can see it has the same data whatever we have provided through and if you click on response tab you can see it had written the data whatever we have entered and it had written one extra field called id this ID is not exposed on UI. So if you want to extend your test coverage by adding DV validation, then you can extract this ID and query database to cross verify the details. Let me give you another use case. I have a web page with multiple components and every component will show the data based on API response. If API fails to return response, then it will show error occurred. If I show you the source code for the first component, I am using this endpoint, which is a valid one. For the second one also, I am using a valid API. But for the third component, I am using some invalid endpoint. If I copy this API and hit in a browser, it will display some random pick. All these APIs are dummy APIs available online. If you inspect this web page and go to network tab and reload the web page. So you can see this is showing the API which I am using. The below one is also showing the API and the third one which is invalid endpoint. So if you want to get list of APIs who failed to return response or throw error codes, then we need to intercept these API calls. So intercepting API calls is possible only in Chromium based web browser like Chrome and Ace using Selenium WebDriver. Because Selenium WebDriver supports only Chrome DevTools protocol, which is CDP. For other browsers, we may need to use another proxy dependencies. So, Chrome DevTools protocol provides one domain called network, which you can find left hand side. If you open network domain, it has many methods and events. Here, we need to majorly focus on two events request will be sent and response received. If you click on request will be sent, then it has some parameters like request ID, request timestamp etc. And if you click on response received event, here also you can see the parameters like request ID and all. 
So basically what will happen when any API request is sent, request will be sent, event will be called. And when response is received, that will be under this event response received. And both will be connected using a request ID. Let me show you in the real time. Let's inspect this user registration page. Click on settings, experiments and check this protocol monitor. If it is not checked, then press Ctrl Shift P and search for protocol monitor and click on it. Let's click on this register button again. You can see a lot of methods were called, but let me filter with network dot request will be sent. So let's focus on first two. If you click the second one, you can see the same parameters whatever we just saw on CDP page like request ID, initiator and all. And you can see this is of pre-flight type which I explained previously. And if you click on the first one which is the actual API call, it also has one request ID and some details. If you come down, you can see one request object and if you expand it, here you should able to see the post data which is your payload and it has HTTP method post. Similarly, if you filter with response received, before that, note down this request ID which is 57416. So, let me filter with response received. So, for the request will be sent event, we had this 57416. The same request ID we have for one response received. If you click on it, here you can see response object and other details. But under this response object, we don't have the response payload. So to get the request body and response body, we can use another CDP command. So click on this icon and select target as main window and here put network dot get request post data. It will ask you one parameter which is request ID. So copy this request ID and if you paste it here, before that let me clear everything and hit the send button. So you can see one method is available in the log and if you click on this in the response you can see the post data which was the request payload and by passing the same request ID we have another command called network dot get response body. So let me provide the request ID, clear the logs and click on send button again. So we have the response body available now you can see it has one ID 101. So let's switch to IntelliJ and write Selenium script with CDP commands to achieve the same thing. I have already created a simple script to save time. In this script, I load user registration web page in Chrome browser and enter name, email, password, and click on register button. First step is to create session. So I need to use Chrome driver dot get dev tools which will return me a type of dev tools itself which i can store into any variable now i have a method dev tools dot create session so first step is done second step we need to enable network in the chrome dev tools protocol you can find we have one method network dot enable and if you click on it it takes some parameters and all are optional when we call the CDP command, it will enable network tracking. Network events will now be delivered to the client. So to send any devtools command, I need to use devtools.send and use the domain name which is network. Import it from the latest version which is 127 as of now. Dot enable and pass all the parameters optional. So I'm going to use optional dot empty for all the parameters. So that was the second step. I already explained these two events will be responsible to capture, send request and response. So if you want to add any events, then we need to use listeners. For that, we have one method devtools.addListener. And if you see, it takes the first parameter of type event and the next parameter is consumer. If you go inside this addListener method, First one we know already and for the 
second parameter it is of type consumer and if you go inside it is a functional interface which has only one method accept event name is network dot request will be sent and whatever it returns let's store that into any variable maybe request will be sent only i'm using lambda expression here the type of this variable will be request will be sent itself let me use request will be sent dot get request which will return you a type of request now i can do request dot get url let me store into a type of variable string and also i can call request dot get method which i can store into another string type let me quickly print these two things so how it is going to work when we click on this register button request will be sent then this listener will be activated it will execute these lines if no request are sent nothing will be executed so let's run this program and see whether it is printing the url and method or not so program is over and if you see the console so first one is the pre flight one which i have already shown you and second one is the actual api call now suppose you want to get the request body so if you call request dot here we have one method called get post data which is deprecated now dot get because it is returning you of type optional which i am going to store into a type string and let me print this object maybe i should name it as request body since this method is going to be deprecated so another way is we need to get the request id which i shown you in the chrome browser so call request will be sent dot get request id this will return me a type of request id and i need to use another cdp command so dev tools dot send network dot get request post data and pass the request id and this will return me a string which i am going to store into a string variable and let me print this object maybe i will name it like request body 1 let me quickly run this program and see on execution we can see some console exceptions and if you scroll up it prints the url and method for the options and post and it has also printed the request body but for the options api call we don't have any request body that's why it is giving exception no value present this is coming because of this method this get post data is returning you a type of optional but here we have not put any check if the value is present or not and we are directly trying to get that so that is very obvious because there will be many api calls and we are not interested in all the api calls because some api calls may not have the body and your script might fail either you need to put some try catch or handle in some different way in my source code of register user html page i am calling this api in my code i am going to put some condition if url equals ignore case and method equals ignore case post then only i am interested to get the request body let me run this program and see the output so this time you can see it has printed the details properly one more important point here that when you click on this register button two apis are sent so this method will will be running asynchronously for those two calls now another step is to get the response body for the request which is sent and i have already shown you that request id will be the connecting point for both the events here i have already one request id and in the chrome i showed you that i was able to extract request body and response body using the request id let me try to do the same thing here so let's use dev tools dot send command will be network dot get response body pass the request id and then call get body method which will return me the response body into a string variable and if i print this response body let's see what happens so i'm going to run the program in the console we see some exception it says no data found for resource with given identifier 
So actually when we are running the commands in Chrome browser, that time we have everything available like response and request. But when we are capturing through Selenium, here explicitly I need to add events. Then only I can get the response related data. And here I need to add another listener call tape tools dot add listener event will be network dot response received which will give me a type response received itself and here also you can call response received dot get response and here you can extract the url or other stuffs but i am not interested in those things just want the response body for the request which i am interested in so first step i need to store this request id outside of this method so i can create a list of request ids so here list of a string or request id is equal to new array list and after extracting the request id we can add this request id to my list so use all request ids dot add and then request id dot to string and for the response received listener here I am going to extract the request ID first. For that I will use response receive dot get request ID dot to string and then let me store into a variable request ID. And I am going to extract response body only when this list contains that request ID. So I am going to have one if condition if all request IDs dot contains this request ID then I don't need this part. I can call devtools dot send network dot get response body and here I need to pass request id. So here you can use this statement or we can do new request id and pass the this string request id and call get body at the last so that we can get the string response. Let me store into a string variable and I am going to print this response body. And if I run the program, it will give me the request and response body of desired API calls. So in the console, we can see this is my request body and this is the response body. So that's all in this video. I know this is lengthy, but I have tried to cover everything. But if you have any doubt, please comment on this video. If you really like my videos, please like, comment, subscribe and share with others. Thank you everyone.